Hey everyone, I'm Richard. So when Intel's Skylake CPU line came out, we had a lot of requests to compare the top-end i7-6700K quad-core with the existing 5820K hexa-core Haswell processor, which only cost a little bit more. Now at the time we didn't have access to the chip, but now, well now we do. So the question is, which is the ultimate gaming CPU? And on top of that, what about the $1,000 Core i7-5960X Octo-Core? Well, let's not beat about the bush, let's get into those benchmarks. So let's kick off with GTA 5, probably the most CPU intensive game in our test suite once it's pushed to the absolute max. Now all testing here is carried out in concert with an overclocked Titan X running at 1080p. The idea is that the more we draw, the more work the CPU does in preparing instructions for the GPU. And the initial results may seem surprising. The quad core 6700K beats the hexacore 5820K, even when both are overclocked to the same 4.6 gigahertz. Now you may note that the 6700 100K stock performance isn't actually that far behind the overclock, while there is more variance between the 5820K's two showings. The reason here is that with XMP memory overclocking active, the motherboard boosts all cores to their max stock turbo. So that's 4.2 GHz for the Skylake chip and 3.6 for the Hexacore 5820K. It seems that even though we have two whole extra cores on the latter, games really seem to prefer higher single core performance, even though GTA does indeed run over multiple threads. But let's factor in the Core i7-5960X. You'll note that it hands in a better showing than the 5820K, but even so, even with a 4.4 GHz overclock there, the Skylake i7 is still marginally the fastest chip overall. Next up, Assassin's Creed Unity. There's really not much to show here. We do seem to be GPU bound. However, you will note two tiers of performance here. It seems that the Skylake i7 is able to use its general improvements in IPC to push more commands to the GPU. Now, let's factor in the 5960X. Once again, despite being able to utilize at least eight threads, the 5960X hands in pretty much exactly the same performance level as the 5820K. In short, the 6700K offers around 5.5% of extra performance overall. Crisis 3, well, that is an interesting one. This initial scene is very much CPU bound and you'll note that the 5960X powers past both quad and hexacore chips. However, as we transition into areas that are more GPU bound, again we see the Skylake Quad i7 push to the fore. Crisis really does use those additional CPU cores and there are gains in certain scenarios, but the bench sequence really does seem to favour the 6700K. Now, Far Cry 4. This game uses one or two dominant threads to power the others. The faster your cores, the better the performance. The end result here is that the 6700K provides the most remarkable boost over the Hexacore 5820K we've seen yet. Even with both chips overclocked, the 6700K hands in a 20 FPS advantage across the run of the sequence. So let's factor in the 5960X. Remarkable results here. Because the core clocks are lower, it's actually handing in depressed performance overall compared to both of the other chips in the test. Shadow of Mordor now. Interestingly, the 5960X claws its way back into contention here. Even its low stock base clock beats off the more highly clocked 5820K. But even so, while it beats the 5820K, just, the overclocked Skylake still beats it by a whisker. Now we'll conclude this first run of tests with a look at The Witcher 3 in our CPU bound Novigrad City test run. This game shows a clear distinction between a Quad i5 and an i7 and it loves memory bandwidth. The 5820K offers more threads and much higher RAM bandwidth, but as you can see here, that doesn't translate into any kind of clear win for the hexacore system. Indeed, once again, the 6700K offers a marginal win. Factoring in the 8 core 5960X offers no real help here. Again, we see performance on par with the 6-core 5820K. Okay, so that's the single GPU side of things taken care of. The X99 platform that hosts the 5820K and the 5960X offers more PCI Express bandwidth, allowing for more graphics cards to be run in parallel. Well, stacking up more than two GPUs in a single system offers very little in the way of value, but two cards, well, that is a viable option. So what happens if we swap out the Titan X we were using and utilize two GTX 980s? Well, GTA 5 highlights even more strongly that the game thrives on Skylake's higher IPC. 
The frame rate graphs there are divided out more widely than they were with the single card as there's more GPU horsepower to tap into. Once we factor in the 5960X, once again we see improved results. Skylake is still king overall, though by the end of the bench sequence its domination is reduced to margin of error stuff. Assassin's Creed Unity? Well, that shows the same two tiers of performance we saw earlier, just with higher overall performance from each processor. Once we add the 5960X to the equation, you'll note that once again there's no real improvement. Once more, Skylake emerges triumphant. Crisis 3, well, that is a curious one. The 5820K hands in a really good showing here, with the stock processor beating the 6700K if it doesn't have that overclock in place. But once the 6700K reaches 4.6 GHz, it propels itself to a small victory over the 6-core chip. Factoring in the 5960X, once again you can see the octa-core chip take point on CPU heavy areas, but where we're GPU bound, Skylake pushes ahead. Overall, a 4.4GHz 8-core chip offers the same frame rate average as a 4.6GHz 6-core chip. Interesting stuff. Finally, in The Witcher 3, moving to dual GPUs actually sees Skylake increase its overall lead, albeit very slightly. This title loves memory bandwidth, but it seems that 3000 MHz DDR4 is enough to tap out its performance level with Skylake. So, we've learned some important stuff here. Very few games utilize the many core Haswell chips available on the X99 platform. Now, those chips, they are great for gaming, but the newer Skylake architecture proves to be faster. And speaking as a 5960X owner myself, I find the results quite remarkable. Now, it's also worth pointing out that if, like me, you do a lot of multimedia work, both 5820K and 5960X leave Skylake for dust, exactly as you would expect. But it is a bit of a shame that Intel's enthusiast platform isn't offering up tangibly higher gaming performance. But on the plus side, this does mean that for gamers, you're getting great results at a lower price. But anyway, that's where we're at for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Getting all of those benches together was a real trial, but just like all of you guys, I really needed to know which one was fastest. Anyway, that's all we've got for now. Please do give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon.